Okay. Welcome, you guys. Welcome to everyone who is joining along today. Um, my name is Marissa Morrison Stein. I'm the founder of the Neon Tea Party. We are a colorful virtual craft studio based in New Jersey um, with a team all over the country. Um, we teach tons of colorful, fiberful crafts and we are just so, so, so excited to be here with you guys today um, with Tulip One Step Tie-Dye, our favorite, absolute favorite go-to brand for tie-dye um, here at Michael's. We teach so much tie-dye. We are obsessed. Doesn't matter the time of year, we are tie-dyeing. And we are just really, really pumped to get to um, share some of our tie-dye knowledge with you guys. Today's class is going to be incredibly special. Um, we're we're going to be creating our own tie-dye colors, which is so much fun. Um, so um, just a couple things before we get started. Um, if you are having fun with us today, if you are inspired to continue your tie-dye journey with Tulip One Step Tie-Dye, we have tons of amazing um, tutorials on our website, theneonteaparty.com. Uh, we'll be referring to a bunch of them throughout today's class. Um, so definitely check those out. Um, our tie-dye assistant, Lindsay, uh, will be popping links into the chat throughout today's lesson, so definitely bookmark that. Um, if you are actually tie-dyeing with us in real time today or, you know, watching along and planning to tie-dye in the coming days and weeks, definitely share your creations on Instagram. We love to see how your projects turn out. Um, so you can, uh, when you share any pictures of your tie-dye creations, be sure to tag us at the Neon Tea Party. You can tag Tulip at Tulip Color Crafts and make sure to use the hashtag make it with Michaels. Um, so that's it for kicking us off right now. We're just so, so, so excited to dive into today's workshop. Um, we are, as I said, learning how to create our own tie-dye colors today. So Tulip makes so many awesome tie-dye kits using their one-step tie-dye. Um, quick note about the dye we're using today, Tulip's dye, uh, and why we're so obsessed with it is because the dye that comes in these kits makes it so incredibly easy to just dive immediately into tie-dye. Um, because you don't have to do any prep to your fabric at all. Uh, all you need to do is wet your fabric, add water to your bottle of dye powder, and you're ready to start tie dyeing. Um, so that is what makes it so much fun. The colors are so vibrant um, and they last so long and just like cannot cannot be uh, more enthusiastic about this dye. So really excited to get to um, share a little bit more about how you can take your Tulip One Step tie-dye kit, use the colors that come into come with it, um, and then make it even, you know, make even more colors with the colors that you have on hand. So the Tulip One Step kits come with any number of colors. Some of the kits come with three colors, some come with five or six, um, and some come with a bunch of colors. I think there's maybe like 16 colors in this kit, something like that. But anyway, this is the Tulip One Step Tie-Dye Party Kit. Um, love this kit. It comes with everything you need to tie-dye minus the items. Um, and so today we're going to be using this kit in particular, which is available at Michael's. Um, and you, and we'll be doing, um, I'll be showing you guys how to take like the basic rainbow of colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, turquoise, purple, black, and fuchsia, 
and taking that baseline rainbow of colors and mixing them up and changing the ratio of dye powder to water um, to also change, you know, how intense the colors are. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing today. More specifically, I'm going to show you guys um, some samples of the colors and the patterns that you guys are going to be learning today. So on top of learning how to make um, a bunch of different gorgeous colors, you guys are also going to be learning two of our go-to tie-dye patterns. You guys are going to learn how to do classic swirl pattern, as well as bullseye, which I'm also wearing on my t-shirt right here. So we're going to kick off class learning how to make pastel tie-dye. This is a rainbow bullseye featuring all nine colors that we're going to be working with today in a pastel tone. So this is, I'm going to share with you guys um, some tips on how to get a range of color intensities just by changing up how much dye powder you're using in relation to the amount of water in your bottle. Then we're going to uh, dive into actually mixing and blending colors to create new colors. So we have an amazing tie-dye chart that we're going to share with you throughout today's lesson. Uh, Lindsay just popped that in the chat. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, and so definitely click that, open that up. You can refer to that throughout today's class. I'm going to be showing you guys some formulas from there, um, all using Tulip One Step Tie-Dye and the colors that I mentioned. Um, so we're going to be, this is one of our color ways that we're going to be learning. This is a Mandarin, a Chartreuse, and then a dark magenta, so gorgeous, such a fun colorway. Um, and obviously the swirl pattern, which I'm going to teach you guys, as well as this uh, combination of cool tones. We have a teal, we have a dark plum, and we have this um, dark bluish green color. And actually we're going to have fun experimenting, trying to get this blue a little bit more green. So that will be really fun for us to do. So basically today is going to be like uh, going into the science lab, but with arts and crafts supplies, which is so much fun. I like to call uh, mixing tie-dye, going into the tie-dye lab. So that's where we're going to be heading to in just a moment. Um, so just a quick reminder before we go into all the supplies that you guys are going to need today. Um, you can put all of your questions into the chat. Lindsay, our tie-dye assistant, is hanging out in the chat with you guys, answering whatever questions you uh, that she can. And I will be pausing throughout today's lesson to um, uh, answer any questions that she can't, um, I'll call out for Lindsay to uh, shoot any of your questions my way and uh, we'll get all those answers to you guys. So before we dive into the supply list, Lindsay, how are we doing? What's happening in the chat? We're doing so good. We have so much excitement in the chat, Marissa. We have folks all over the place from coast to coast and even Tasmania, Australia. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Well, welcome again to you guys. Thank you so much for joining, whether you're here in the States or around the world. We are just so thrilled that you're here today and I can't wait to start tie-dyeing with you guys. So again, don't hesitate to put all your questions in the chat. Um, I'm going to um, stay on the front cam with you for just another minute, go over the supply list with you guys, give you a second to grab anything that you might not have in front of you right now. Um, and then I'm going to head over to the tie-dye cam, which uh, will be showing the tie-dye lab in progress. So things you're going to need, of course, you're going to need your tulip one-step tie-dye, whether you have the party kit, any other kit, um, you can find all tulip one-step tie-dye over at Michael's. Um, also, you're going to need your items to dye. Our favorite, favorite um, t-shirts to tie-dye with are the 100% cotton Gildan t-shirts from Michael's as well as the 100% cotton bandanas also from Michael's. It's 
The brand is Imagine 8. You can find it in the little bandana section. Um, in general, when you're tie-dyeing, it's preferable to use 100% all natural fibers. So 100% cotton, wool, silk, rayon, anything natural is going to take the dye. Um, if you run into a blend, this happens, especially if you're tie-dyeing sweatshirts or sweatpants, just make sure that the blend is at least 50% cotton. Um, and then you'll, the color might be a little bit softer, but it will still take the dye. Um, so other than that, if you are using a Tulip One Step kit, most likely it will come with the dye powder already in a bottle. So you have your bottles ready to go. But if you are using a refill pack, if you're using like, you know, a refill pack that came in a Tulip One Step kit, just make sure you have your bottles handy. You are going to need, here's where it gets really fun. You're going to need plastic cups. We're going to be using these plastic cups to dump out our tie-dye powder so that we can scoop in the amounts that we need. Um, so make sure you have that. You could use Dixie cups, you can use um, cupcake liners, just any small container to be able to scoop the, dye, the powder out of. Um, you're going to want to be labeling things as you go so you know what powder is what color, what dye bottles have what dye colors in it. So I love using washi tape. You can also use masking tape, just any tape that you can write on and a pen or a marker. So you'll see here that all my cups are already labeled. Um, you're going to need gloves. So anytime you're tie dyeing, handling dye, you want to protect your hands because it's dye, it stains. So make sure you have some gloves to protect your hands. You're going to want to protect your work surface as well. So make sure you have a plastic tablecloth or garbage bag or something laid out. Um, you're going to need all the way over here paper towels. We're going to be using these a lot to wipe up our surface as we go. We're also going to use it to place underneath our items that we're dyeing to absorb any extra dye. Um, you're going to want something to cover your clothing, an apron or a smock. Um, you're going to need rubber bands for the tying up process. You're going to need lots of supplies. I was getting set up and I was like, lots of supplies, you guys. So Make sure you have something when your item has dye on it, make sure you have something like a plastic bag or even saran wrap works really well um, to just keep your item covered and damp because you'll need it to sit for a bit of time, which we'll get into at the end of class. Um, couple other things that are helpful. Well, first of all, make sure you have access to water. I have in front of me here two buckets of water, which you'll see me using, as well as a pitcher for filling up um, the bottles. But you, as long as you have access to a sink or you know, if you're doing it outside and you're not near a hose or something, bring out a bucket, bring out a pitcher of water. Just make sure that you can be able to dunk your items in water, rinse your measuring spoon, which I realize I forgot, I'll come back to that. Um, rinse your measuring spoon um, and be able to pour water into your dye bottles. So the measuring spoon, which I apologize, I skipped earlier, we are going to be using in tandem with our little cups of dye powder. We're going to be using a measuring spoon throughout this workshop today to be able to control the amount of dye powder that we're using. So I have a 1.25 milliliter um, scoop, but you can also use a quarter teaspoon is the same exact size. So go ahead, grab yourself a quarter teaspoon. Um, my one recommendation though, is we always recommend keeping your tie-dye supplies separate from anything that's going to be touching food in the future. Um, so if you are using a quarter teaspoon, just declare that your tie-dye scoop going forward and uh, you're going to want a fresh um, quarter teaspoon for your kitchen. Um, two other things and then we are going to get started. Um, if you have a tie-dye rack or a baker's rack, like a cooling rack on and a baking sheet that's at least one inch deep. This is super handy to tie dye on top of. I'm going to be showing you guys how to use both a tie dye rack and um, a and paper towels, but 
they come really in handy, especially if you're going to do the next supply, which is the final one I'll share with you guys, totally optional as well. Um, but if you would like to make color swatches, I have here our handy tie-dye chart. And this is um, how I figured out all different color combinations using um, those basic colors of the rainbow. So if you are interested in swatching, coming up with your own tie-dye formulas or testing out some of the ones that we're sharing with you today, you can just take little, take some old cotton fabric. I tore up an old bed sheet. Um, just make sure it's cotton and just cut it into these little swatches. Um, so if you're interested in swatching today, go ahead, find some old bed sheets or anything else, an old cotton t-shirt or a new cotton t-shirt, just any cotton that you can cut into little squares or rectangles. Um, so if you have a Tulip One Step Kit, you'll have a lot of these supplies already in them, such as the rubber bands, gloves, and the tablecloth. Um, so just make sure that you also grab your all the things to mix it up in the tie-dye lab, like the um, cups, the labels, the scoop, um, anything like that. So before I head on over, oh, you know what? I am going to just head on over right now to the craft cam. Um, if you guys, um, two things, if you need to go grab anything before we get started, we're gonna be just a minute while I switch cameras. And if you have any questions about any of the supplies, definitely type those in the chat. Lindsay's there monitoring um, and I'll check in with you guys from the, um, tie-dye cam to answer any of your supply questions before we get started. All right. While Marissa switches over to the tie-dye cam, we want to know, have you ever tie-dyed with Tulip One-Step tie-dye before? Let us know in the chat. All right, it looks like we have a lot of folks that are have used Tulip before. We have some folks that have not. That's very exciting. We're pumped to have you guys here today. Amazing. Well, I'm here over on the tie-dye cam. Hi, you guys. Um, Lindsay, do we have any supply questions before we get started? No, we are good to go. I think we're ready to mix it up. Amazing. All right, you guys, so the first thing, anytime you tie-dye, the first step, doesn't matter if you're mixing colors or you know diving right into your Tulip One Step Kit, first thing is to protect yourself and your workspace. So I have my rubber gloves here. I'm gonna throw those on because we're gonna be handling dye right away. And then I also have a plastic tablecloth covering my table and that just protects my workspace. Um, depending on where you're tie-dyeing in your home or outside, if you wanna protect the floor, you can always throw down a, a plastic tarp. And if you want to protect your clothing, um, make sure you're wearing an apron or a smock, something to keep yourself nice and clean. So I have my gloves on. I invite you to join me if you're crafting along. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to prep our tie-dye powder, our tie-dye lab situation. Um, so really, really excited to start um, getting crafty with you guys. So just again, to give you guys a little bit of context, we are using nine basic colors from the Tulip One Step um, tie-dye party kit. So we have what we here at the Neon Tea Party call our tie-dye rainbow. We have fuchsia, red, orange, yellow, green, turquoise, blue, purple, and black. And so each, the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to dump out the powder that comes in our tie-dye bottles into these cups here. So when you do that as well, 
you're going to want to just make little labels for yourself. Um, so you're going to want to, I mentioned to have washi tape or masking tape or something like that um, to be able to label your cup. Some of the colors can look similar. Some of the colors, you know, like the red and the orange here, they're pretty similar in tone. So just make sure you label everything so that you know what you're handling. So I'm going to start dumping my powders into the cups. And you can see here the caps, what the colors are. Also, you can check on the um, package um, which colors are included and match up the color of the cap with the color label on the package. And when you dump out your colors, um, just keep, your, keep the bottle near it. One tip for you guys is you know, the bottles are going to have a little bit of powder residue still in them, which is definitely not a problem at all, especially because we're starting with pastel here today. So we're going to start just by making diluted versions of all these colors. So I'm going to use the same bottle that I'm dumping out of, basically pouring out all this dye here so that you can, um, so that you can measure the exact amount that you need. Um, there we go. But one other option is that you can rinse out the bottle so that you can have a clean bottle, especially if you are going to be combining colors or maybe you're just, you know, joint, you're just uh, going to get creative and see where all the mixing and matching takes you. So either rinse them out or just keep the bottles handy right near where you have your labeled cup, just so you know what color was originally in those bottles. So I went ahead, I dumped out all nine of my colors in my labeled um, cups. So now I can go ahead and start creating my dye mixes. So a um, couple things that I have handy to get started creating my color mixes. Um, I have my little tie-dye scoop here. Again, it's mine is 1.25 milliliters. I'm sure that's hard to see. Um, but if you have a quarter teaspoon, that will do the trick. It's the same amount. And then I have right here a pitcher of water, which I'm just going to put off to the side here so you guys can see that. And I have some extra bottles over here that I'm going to be creating my mix and match colors in. You know, try not to drop them into your tie dye powder. Um, but I've already pre labeled the bottles for the colors that I'll be creating by mixing up the colors. I've already pre labeled those bottles here. And the other bottles for the pastels are already labeled here. I actually have a lot of my pastels prepped, but I'm going to show you guys how to make pastel colors first. Okay, so before we dive in to our first round of uh, color creation, which is going to be making pastels, I just want to check in with Lindsay to see if you guys have any questions about getting your um, workspace set up, getting your tie-dye powder set up, anything like that. Nope, we are good to go. Amazing. All right, you guys, so let's learn how to make pastel tie-dye. So I'm going to first just pull in the sample that we are referring to today drape it over my arms so you guys can check it out. So this rainbow bullseye here, give you guys a little scan of it, has all nine colors that we're going to be creating today. Now, depending on how much powder you put into your bottle, um, these bottles, by the way, are four ounces. So we're going to be using four ounces of water um, with the amount of dye powder that we're scooping in. So if you think about it, the more, the more dye powder that's in your 
four ounce bottle, the in more intense the color will be because the way dye works is that the dye particles actually adhere to your fabric. So the, dark, the more uh, dye particles that are in your dye mix, the brighter the color will be, the more intense the color will be. And then the opposite is true um, if you're going for something more pastel. So using less dye powder will result in a lighter color. So if you end up using a dye bottle that's larger, like an eight ounce or 12 ounce, um, you're just going to want to scale all of these suggested ratios and measurements accordingly. Just keep in mind that all of the um, in all of the measurements for today are with four ounces of water. So when you're making pastel tie dye, um, if you want to refer to our tie dye color chart, um, which Lindsay, if you don't mind sharing that once again, um, if you haven't recently. Um, you can use, I have a little printout here to make it easier to see. There is, um, you know, a number of uh, color intensities that you can create all depending on the amount of dye that you're, dye powder that you're using. Today, I'm going to keep it really simple for you guys. I'm going to show you how to add just the one scoop of dye powder to your um, dye here, to your dye bottles here. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, add one scoop. But if you want to do a pastel that's lighter, you can do a half a scoop. If you want like more of a medium tone color, you can do two scoops. So let's make a, um, a bottle of pastel dye. All right, so I have here my bottle. Bottle is too big, got a smaller bottle here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, take a little, my little scoop. I'm going to make sure it's nice and clean. You're going to want to rinse your little scoop in between each, um, every time you're scooping it. I have a paper towel handy just to dry it off like so, and that's just to avoid, you know, contaminating any colors. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to just pick a random color. I'm gonna do purple because it's closest to me here. So to make my pastel purple, I'm just going to take my little scoop. Again, it's a quarter teaspoon. I'm going to tap it to level it off and pop that back into my little purple tie-dye bottle like so, and then just top it off with water, which I'm going to pour over my bucket, which is off to the side here, just to catch any inevitable splashing. When you add your water, just give yourself a little bit of extra room at the top. You can see here, hopefully there's a little extra space at the top and I'm just going to go ahead, replace my cap. It has the little purple cap on there and then give your dye bottle a really good shake. You want to make sure to shake it up enough so that any of the powder that's um, in your bottle is all dissolved. So you'll see I'm pointing to right here um, the little um, like tie dye powder that's at the bottom of my bottle. Make sure when you shake up your tie dye that your cap is on. Mine just splashed a little bit. No worries, but I always like to make sure that my cap is on nice and tight and make sure the top of your cap is covered really well. I often will just shake the whole thing in a, um, while holding a paper towel. All right, so we have here pastel purple, you can call it lavender. I went ahead and pre-prepped all of these colors all nine of these colors in pastels, they're all labeled here. I definitely recommend, can't recommend labeling enough. Um, so we're gonna come back to these tie-dye colors a little bit later in class today and see how they come out. Um, so I'm gonna set these aside, but you can use that same amount, that one scoop with all of these colors here with pairing it with the four ounces of water to create your pastel. And again, you can um, 
I'll show you guys how you can quickly test out your color to see if you want it to be a little more intense or a little more, um, a little lighter as you go. So I'm just setting aside all these little guys here. I'm going to grab a paper towel. And my favorite way to test out colors to see how they're going to look is to take a paper towel. When you're removing your cap, again, you can use a paper towel because you're going to see you get a little bit of a squirt. And then use your paper towel to just squeeze a little sample of your dye on it. This is still pretty dark. It's going to come out a lot lighter, number one. Things that are wet are always darker than when they're dry. And also remember a bunch of your dye is going to rinse out in the wash. It's going to be a little bit lighter um, than what you see. But let's say you were like, I want a really, really pale pastel purple. I feel like I put too much dye powder into my bottle. Then you can go ahead and just dump out some of the dye. I would say, you know, start small. You can always dump out more. Um, I would dump out, you know, maybe a third of the bottle, add more water, shake it up, test it out, um, and then keep doing so until you're happy with the shade. The same goes in the opposite. If this were too light for you, if you wanted it to be darker, you could go ahead, add more dye powder, shake it up, test it up. Um, and that's also what, if you want to create little formulas for yourself, um, you can use a swatch to, you know, test out the different um, color intensities, the different amounts of dye that you want to put in and um, be able to have that as a reference like our tie dye color chart here. Okay, so that is pastels. Lindsay, I want to check in and see if there are any questions regarding creating pastel dyes. Remember guys, we're going to be actually applying these to fabric shortly. We just have a lot of excitement in the chat. Um, some different, you know, questions about the the dye lasting after it's mixed. But yeah, a lot of people are excited. Amazing. Thank you, Lindsay. And thank you so much for keeping an eye on the chat. Um, let's move on to creating our colorways. So I have here just to recap for you guys, we're going to be creating six colors. So our first combo that we're going to do is a chartreuse, which is a very bright uh, greenish yellow. We're going to do mandarin, which is um, a very yellowy orange, and then a dark magenta, which is going to be a mixture of pink and purple, comes out so beautiful. And then we're going to do something with cool tones here. So we're going to make our own teal, which is a little bit more green than a turquoise. We're going to do a plum color, which is like, it's like a plum eggplant color. It's a dark, deep purple. And then we're going to try and get ourselves a forest green. I made this color combination and it turned out a little bit more blue than I was hoping. So we're gonna have fun today, um, experimenting with mixing our colors and um, trying to get a little more of a forest green than this dark greenish blue. So if you would like to um, make these dye colors along with me, definitely refer to our tie dye color chart. I have another page of it printed out here. These are our, some of our favorite color blends using the nine rainbow colors. Um, and so we're going to just dive into some of our favorite ones here. So um, if you check out our um, color chart, you'll see kind of hard to see on the little printout here, but if you guys have the page open um, on your computer, you'll see little formulas under each color swatch. And they'll say two scoops of one color, one scoop of another color, a half scoop of a different color. Um, so that's what we're going to make now. So I'm going to start with the first colorway. I have my little bottles labeled. You can either label your colors in advance if you are following our tie-dye color chart or your own formula chart that you make and you know which color you're planning to create. 
Or if you're experimenting, um, you can just put your, write out the formula on the little sticker on your little tape um, so that you know, okay, this bottle has one scoop of this color and two scoops of this color. Um, you know, if you haven't given it a name yet, or if you're testing out your combinations um, before actually, you know, using the tie dye. So I'm going to start with our first three colors here today. We are making the, tr the dark magenta, true mandarin, and chartreuse. These are just colors, color names that we gave these colors when experimenting. Um, so let's start with our dark magenta here. Um, dark magenta calls for two scoops of fuchsia and two scoops of purple. And I'm actually going to start experimenting a little bit with you guys because the, the dark magenta that came out on my t-shirt here, I kind of want it to be a little bit more pink. So let's go ahead and try um, two scoops of fuchsia and only one scoop of purple. And we'll see how that comes out. So I have my fuchsia here. These are all going to be even scoops. So I got one scoop, two scoop, and then I'm going to skip rinsing my scoop right now, just because the fuchsia and the purple, the colors are pretty, pretty similar. So I'm not too worried about cross-contaminating, but I'm definitely going to give my scoop a rinse now that I'm done. I'm going to move on to orange colors next. So I have all those, my two scoops of fuchsia, my one scoop of purple in my bottle. I'm going to fill up my bottle. I'm going to put my little cap on here, give it a shake, put the little cap on tighter than the last time because I did have a little purple splash off camera here. Give it a good shake. And I'm actually going to bring in my tie dye rack right now. And we're going to start testing these swatches as we create these colors here so that you guys can see the colors come to life. You don't have to wait until we actually bind up our, um, our t-shirts yet. So I'm gonna bring this in, I'm going to pull in a swatch here, just a little cotton swatch. And let's see how this, this uh, magenta comes out. Oh, I forgot. You're gonna want to wet your swatch first, my bad. Okay, swatch is wet. Now it'll really take the dye. There we go. Look at how gorgeous that is. Ah, oh, so beautiful. It's almost like an orchid purple. Okay, let's try our next one. So next up, we got true Mandarin. So true Mandarin calls for one scoop of orange and one scoop of yellow. We got orange. We've got yellow. Pour in our water. I'm telling you guys, I started, I worked on um, making this color chart this summer and I really felt like such a tie-dye scientist. It was so much fun. It's still so much fun. Um, so if you've never tried mixing your tie-dye colors before, obviously that's why you're joining today to learn all about it. But I just got to emphasize how much fun this process is. So I just wet my sample. Let's test this true mandarin out. Again, this is like a yellow orange. We had one part yellow, one part orange. I'm just going to make sure that my swatches stay away from each other because they tend to bleed on one another. Look at how beautiful that orange is. Oh, so gorgeous. I can't wait to use that one. All right, I have a little orange cap for it. Oh, no, I don't. There we go. Put a little orange cap on there. And Next up, we're going to do chartreuse. So if you're unfamiliar with the color chartreuse, it's a good one. It's pretty true to the little cap that's on here already. It's like a lime green, but even more yellow. 
It's like a yellow with the slightest bit of green to it. So our chartreuse calls for two scoops of yellow and just a quarter scoop of green. So I have my yellow here. I'm gonna put one, two scoops of yellow. And then grab my green and I'm going to approximate a quarter scoop. You can just, you know, eyeball it. Maybe I'll do on the smaller side because really you want the yellow to be showing through. And when you're mixing the colors, keep in mind that the darker color in a combination is always going to dominate. So you can just keep that in mind when you're mixing your colors if you want it to make sure that you know, it looks one way or the other. So let's blend up our chartreuse, see how this comes out. So cool to anybody has watched Nickelodeon in their lifetime, making this color always reminds me of Nickelodeon slime. Okay, so I'm gonna shake this up. Can't wait to see how this one turns out. Wet my sample, my little swatch here. Take my cap off, I won't lose it this time. There we go. And let's see, check that out. So gorgeous. So remember when you're making your swatches that number one, your swatches are wet. So the color is going to be darker than how it will actually come out once you've rinsed and washed and dried your items. Um, so these colors will definitely lighten up once um, I've washed them all. So, okay, we got two more here. Let's get through them as quickly as possible because we want to also teach you guys how to do a swirl and a bullseye pattern um, that you can apply to your, um, apply your dyes to. So next up, I'm moving on to my second colorway, which is that, I'll just bring it in real fast. The, these cool tones. And remember, we're going to be experimenting, trying to make our forest green a little bit more green. So first let's do the teal. That color came out really beautiful. So the teal calls for one scoop of green and three scoops of turquoise. And I think I will maybe do a little bit more green this time. So let's do, I'm gonna do two scoops of turquoise. See, I just can't stop experimenting. I'm do, gonna do my two scoops of turquoise and one scoop of green to make it, try it. We're gonna try and make it just a little more green. Okay, let's see how that turns out. Oh, I can already see this is going to be beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. At the neon tea party, we are, I'm sure you guys can already tell, pretty obsessed with color and mixing and matching our colors and creating really beautiful colors. So there's so much joy in um, getting to create colors from your imagination. All right, so let's test this out. Then we'll do our last two swatches. Oh, beautiful. That was a good call. Love, love, love that teal. I'm gonna hold this whole thing up to you guys um, once all six swatches are done so that you can really get to see how gorgeous these colors turned out. Okay, I'm gonna do my dark plum next because that formula worked out beautifully. The plum is almost like an eggplant color. So it's a, you know, a very inky purple. Scoop is being, not wanting to rinse off all the way. Don't mind the splashing in the background. Let's try and get this clean. All right, we might just have to do our best here. Okay, so to make our plum, we're going to do one scoop of black and one scoop of purple. So that's what really helps us to get that very inky purple, that very rich, deep, almost eggplant purple. So that was my one scoop of purple. 
go ahead and grab for black, that is blue. Let's not mix that up. We got black here. Gorgeous. I'm gonna rinse this right now. Awesome. Add my water here. And I'm going to just make, get both of my swatches wet here, take us home with all these color experiments we're doing here today. Cool, let's see how this plum turned out. Wow, never gets old, that is gorgeous. It's like, like I said, that really inky, deep, rich purple. That's so, so beautiful. All right, let's make our last color, you guys, our forest green. So like I said, I wanna make this color even more green than from my sample. So the forest green on our color chart calls for one scoop of yellow and two scoops of blue. So I'm going to use, let's start with our two scoops of blue. Maybe I'll actually do one and a half scoops to already change up that ratio. So that's one. Oh, sorry, it calls for three scoops of blue. I don't remember what I said. So I'm gonna do two scoops of blue because it calls for three scoops of blue. Okay, two scoops of blue. And then we're going to do, I'm gonna do a scoop and a half of yellow. So this should really give us a green for sure. All right, let's check it out, you guys. Last color. I kind of feel like this class today is, an, is a cross between like a science experiment show and a cooking show, right? Because it's like, Add one scoop of this and a dash of that. Okay, let's check it out. Oh yeah, that did the trick. I'm gonna hold this up so you guys can see, but this is definitely a really deep, rich green. It's so, so gorgeous. So I'm gonna hold this up for you guys so you can see we have the dark magenta, the mandarin, the chartreuse, the teal, the plum, and the forest green. These colors look so, so stunning. So take them in. We have all of our dye prepped. I'm gonna give you guys a quick lesson on how to do bullseye and swirl to quintessential tie-dye patterns. And while I make some space for myself to do that, I'm gonna check in with Lindsay, who's monitoring the chat. How are we doing, Lindsay? Do we have any questions about mixing up our colors? We do. So everyone is so excited to learn the designs and apply all of the color creations to them. One question we did have is uh, from May, if we don't need all of the powder in the bottle, is there a way to calculate how to split it in half or quarters to preserve it? If we don't need all the dye in the bottle. Yeah. So what I would say is if you want to, you know, um, just make the amount, the exact amount of dye and dye powder that you need. First of all, when you dump out your dye um, into a little container, I would start by um, making, using a, re, a, a sealable container to dump out your dye powder. So first step would be to use something, maybe like those little shallow mason jars, something like that, that will have a lid. So that first of all, you'll be able to store really easily store your dye powders. And then the second thing would be all the ratios that I'm recommending to you here today, I would um, cut those in half and only fill up your dye bottle 50% with water. That way, if you're only going to use, like I can show you from yesterday um, when I was making my bullseye, um, 
you know, making my little bullseye sample, I still have all this um, dye left. So you definitely, depending on how many items you're making, you, there's a good chance that you would have that extra dye left. So you can absolutely start by only making, you know, a half bottle of your dye. So if you start by making a half bottle of dye, then, and again, cutting the ratios that are on our tie dye color chart that I'm recommending or any ratios that you create for yourself, just cut that amount in half too, um, just to stay with the same amount of water ratio. Awesome. And then uh, one more question. Can you dye leather? Oh my gosh, that is a really good question. You definitely can. Um, the thing with leather is that it's treated a lot of times. So that means there's like a coating on the surface. So you would need to have a light colored raw leather for the dye to really take. Um, but I will tell you from experience, I had a leather tote bag that got purple dye splashed all over it. And while the bag didn't look bright, bright purple. The dye definitely, I mean, you could tell that it was purple, but it was, you know, it looked definitely looked like a dye stain. All right, perfect. Let's learn these patterns. Awesome, you guys. So actually I'm going to do this one here. We're gonna start with a swirl. So while I was answering your questions, I just dunked my t-shirts into the water. Um, off to the side, you always need to make sure that your fabric is wet before applying the dye, as we saw with the swatches. Um, and then, so to make a swirl, which I actually have one already prepped here, ready to go, you're going to start with your fabric laid out flat, and you're going to find the center, whatever you want the center of your fabric to be. You're going to pinch it and you're going to just swirl it up using your two little pinchy fingers, swirl, 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 and you're going to get it to a place like this where maybe you have a sleeve sticking out, maybe you have a little bit of end sticking out, and then you're just going to take the rest of your fabric, manually swoop it around, and then we're going to add six rubber bands, sorry, not six rubber bands, three rubber bands to create six slices. You can do more than that, less than that, depending on the size of your item. Each one of these that we're making today is getting three colors. So I want to purposely have a multiple of three just so that we can evenly disperse those colors. Okay, so you're basically wrapping these rubber bands around nice and tight so that your swirl ends up looking like a pizza. It's flat, it has little wedges to it. And each one of these wedges or slices as we like to call them is going to get its own dye color. We'll do the same color on the front and the back of each slice. So I'm going to set this one aside. And now I'm gonna show you guys how to bullseye, which starts the same exact way. So bullseye, you'll start in the center whichever, wherever you want the center to be. That could also be like the bottom corner or, you know, just pick where you want your center to be. You're going to pinch it in the center and then you're going to pull your fabric up so that it all hangs down like so. And then you're going to add rubber bands going down your fabric. We're creating nine sections here. So I'm gonna tie these up real fast for you guys. So we can get into applying the dye here. And when you're rubber banding a bullseye, if you're using one color, you especially wanna make sure that your rubber bands are nice and tight. When you're doing multiple colors, you even still wanna keep them nice and tight. But basically each one of these sections that I'm tying here today, is going to get its own color. And that's how you get that really cool series of rainbow rings that grow out on your fabric. So we got one, two, three, four, five. And then once my item is bound up, you can 
place it either on top of a few sheets of paper towel laid on top of one another, or if you have a tie dye rack, that's what you're going to use it for. Just like I was doing with the um, swatches, you're going to place it, place your fabric on top of your tie dye rack and your rack will catch the extra dye that will drip down. But if you don't have a tie dye rack, don't even worry about it. Paper towel is awesome. I'm gonna show you guys both ways. And as I'm applying the dye, I'll also share with you guys how to rinse and care for your tie dye items. Um, Cause we have just a few minutes of class left. So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have 10, we have a little bonus at the bottom. All right, so I'm actually going to start here with the pastel. It's ready to go. We're gonna do a pastel bullseye and I'll show you guys what this will look like. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna open up all my pastel die caps and you guys will see how gorgeous these colors came out. You guys, I have so many tie bottles over here, if you could only see. But that's part of the fun of being in the tie-dye lab. Am I right? All right, let's get some of these colors start applying here. We can't wait to see the reveal. The best part. Okay, ready? Let's do it. So we've got light red. We've got light pink, oh, beautiful. Let's do some light orange. All of these, I'm gonna say light black. You can translate those to their true colors. Light yellow, light green, light turquoise. Where's my light blue? Beautiful, fuchsia, sorry, that's not fuchsia, that's purple. Purple, we got black, light black, also known as gray. And we'll bring it back with the first color. Let me move this up so you guys can see. Move, bring it back with the first color, which is the red. So, so cool. So when you're doing the bullseye, just make sure you flip over and fill in the other side as well. I'm going to keep us moving here. So just uh, use your imaginations. Pretend I went through and uh, wrapped or finished dyeing that whole thing. Um, when you're doing a bullseye, if you do have saran wrap, this is going to be the best way to keep your tie dye item moist just by wrapping it up in some saran wrap. You can also use a Ziploc bag, but in particular with the um, bullseye here, you're going to you know, want to keep all the colors separate from one another. So I find that the saran wrap works particularly well for that pattern. So let's finish up here. I'm gonna apply our dye colors that we created together. And I'll also share um, some final tips on how to rinse and wash your items once the dye is done setting. So we have here our first colorway. We have our dark magenta. So if you remember, I was saying you're going to fill in, let me bring this up so you guys can see, fill in each one of these slices with your dye color. This is our chartreuse, our mandarin. I'm gonna bring this across and each one of these slices will get its own color and we'll just bring that color back on the back side of our little slices here. So you can just give it a flip, follow those colors around to the back side. And with the, um, with the swirl pattern, I definitely recommend using 
a Ziploc bag because it's really easy to just open it up and sort of plop your swirl right in your bag, let it sit. So when you put your item in the bag, you want to let it sit for um, eight to 24 hours. The longer you let your dye sit in the bag, the longer, I mean, the brighter the color will turn out. If you're doing pastels and you truly want a light color, I'm gonna start applying the dyes here. You can leave your items sitting for much shorter, a much shorter amount of time than that. Um, and you could rinse it, you know, even after an hour, the dye will have adhered and you'll get a really beautiful pastel. But our rule of thumb is usually eight to 24 hours in the bag. Then once you're done um, letting your item sit in your plastic bag or saran wrap, then you are going to rinse it out. Make sure you hang on to your gloves. You're going to want to throw these back on to rinse your items. Make sure you rinse in a sink that, you know, ideally um, you're not using for food. So I usually recommend rinsing your items in a bathroom, like your bathtub, bathroom sink, or if you have a utility sink, um, that works super well. Um, so just a little bit about the colors here. You guys can see these gorgeous colors coming together. We have our teal, we have our forest green, and we have our plum. And I just did the same thing with the swirl pattern on the back side here. Grab my plastic wrap. I mean, sorry, not my plastic wrap, my Ziploc bag. And last thing to share with you guys, once your item is done sitting, you've rinsed it out, you're just going to put it in the washing machine, wash it on its own or with any tie-dye items that are in the same or similar colors. Um, different colors, you want to make sure you wash those out separately so that you don't accidentally get, you know, blue on a yellow and orange tie-dye or something like that. Um, but use regular detergent, use warm water, and um, then you could throw it in the dryer. And then after that, just make sure that you're always washing your tie-dye items with your dark colored clothes. Um, so that is our tutorial for today. I hope you guys had so much fun in the tie-dye lab. Um, I'm going to check in with Lindsay, see if we have any final questions before we close out. And then I will um, join you guys back on the front cam. We do not have any final questions, just amazing ideas. Folks want to do pillowcases. They want to do beach towels and canvas totes. And we just cannot wait to see all of your creations. I think we definitely have to get a group photo. So if everyone wants to come on, uh, turn on their face cameras and hold up either what you're working on or show us a smile, we'd love to get a group photo. All right. There we go. There's those smiles. All right, I'm gonna give us a countdown. If you guys wanna turn on your cameras, give us a smile. Ready? Three, two, one. Perfect. All right, I'm just swapping over to my face cam. Thank you guys so much. That was such a fun and jam-packed workshop. I hope that you guys got to learn a lot. I cannot wait to see your creations. Um, so when you have made your big tie-dye reveal, um, definitely don't forget to um, share a picture on Instagram, tag Tulip at Tulip Color Crafts, tag us at the Neon Tea Party and use hashtag make it with Michael. Um, just a reminder that this class is being recorded and it will be live on michaels.com and on Michael's YouTube channel in 24 hours. So definitely look for that tomorrow so you can rewatch this lesson. Um, if you have any questions about today's workshop, you can always contact us at hi at the neon tea party .com. You can keep on tie dyeing with us and Tulip um, and find more tie dye tutorials, including our tie dye color chart using Tulip one step dyes over on the neon tea party .com. We are just so, so grateful that you guys joined us today. 
to learn how to make your own tie-dye colors and mix it up. Um, so welcome, welcome to the Neon Tea Party's community. That's community EA. Um, so before we go, um, I'd love for you guys to join in our Neon Tea Party sign off. This is what we do at every the end of every workshop. So you guys are here, so you're invited to join us. So to close out today's workshop, if you want to, throw up your peace signs. We do a little peace, a little love with a little heart and some neon fingers, peace, love, and neon. Thank you guys so, so, so much for joining today. We hope to see you at another workshop.